everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Cassandra. I have a PhD in vineyard and wine science and on this channel I talk about what it's like to live and work in wine country. So it is currently the weekend and in Napa County we are still a shelter in place county. So I'm at home right now and I'm enjoying the last bit of my coffee. And shout out to the Texas High Plains wine growers. Um, and since I've had a little bit more time at home, uh, I've been going through some older content and uh, back in February I did some wine shopping at grocery stores and I, I never made those videos uh, into something that I've posted uh, but now's the perfect time for me to sort through those and turn them into something useful. Um, I know a lot of people are doing their essential shopping and they're possibly picking up a bottle of wine So my intention of creating these couple of videos is to give you some ideas of some grocery store wine that you can pick up for an affordable price and Enjoy at home because I think wine is for everybody no matter what your budget no matter what you like There's a wine for you to enjoy um, so I'm currently not doing wine shopping and thankfully in this video as you'll see I had a wine haul and that's kind of getting me through right now um, in my wine collection and um, they're all very affordable and um, and it's sort of a part, a two-part series. Uh, first, uh, the previous video was Target wine, and then this is Grocery Outlet wine. I also have a local store that I'm talking about in this video called Bottle Barn, which is in Sonoma County. And um, that being said, I hope you're doing well and are staying healthy. And I also want to say, as much as we are seeing an increase in wine sales from the grocery store level. There are still a lot of family owned and operated wineries here in the Napa Valley and I am sure throughout the United States. And many of them are not able to uh, keep operating. Um, the hospitality members are, um, they are not employed right now since tasting rooms are shut down. So to support them, I would highly encourage you to go online and order wine from your favorite winery and have it shipped to your house. And um, I know that there's a posting for family owned and operated wineries here in Napa Valley. If I can find one for our neighbor, which is Sonoma County, I'll post that below as well because I love going wine tasting in Sonoma County and it's always great to support your neighbors as well. That being said, I hope you find this information interesting and helpful for your grocery store wine purchases and you continue to stay in good health and cheers from wine country. I'm at grocery outlet picking up a few grocery items and I came over to the wine selection and I'm picking up a few budget friendly, extremely budget friendly finds. Hi everyone. Uh, so lately I've been making quite a few fun wine purchases, very reasonable um, wine purchases in terms of price for various occasions. And I wanted to show you what I've been choosing and the reason why I chose it. Some of them I've tried at the tasting room and some of them I have not. Uh, so um, I wanted to go over my logic on these choices because um, as you, as I've explained before, my desire is to make this channel about wine education. So, um, I even thought that I would open one on camera and talking about it, um, sort of speak to the wine as I learned when I was in wine appreciation class about a decade ago. <laughs> um, and I think I might do this clearance Joel got. Let's look at what I have selected. And uh, while I uh, go over these selections, I think I will have a little bit of wine to sip on. First one is um, from Target and it was 30% off. 
and originally $14.99 and I purchased it for $10.48 and it's a 2015 vintage from California so it doesn't indicate the region um, it doesn't say something like Napa or Sonoma because it just says California that suggests the fruit is derived from quite a few different regions in the state and then it just says red wine, so it's a non-varietal uh, wine. And by varietal, I mean if it says something like Merlot or Cabernet Sauvignon, then that would be considered a varietal label. So this is a blend. It has uh, probably a variety of proportions of different red grapes. And here's the back label. On the back, it doesn't say um, what grape varietals are in this wine. So um, I'm gonna look online and see if I can get any more quick information regarding this uh, wine. All right, so I got the spec sheet on this wine to give you some more information. And the $14.99 is actually not the um, most affordable price I found on this one. I I saw quite a few examples online for $13.99. So um, if you're interested in this wine, uh, you can shop around a little bit and get a better price than what Target was offering. Uh, in addition, because it's on clearance, to me does not indicate that there's anything about it that's negative in quality. I think likely what they were doing is just clearing out this older vintage to make room for the 16s, the 20, the 2016s. So I'm not uh, bothered by the fact that this is on clearance because also I know 2015 was a very fabulous vintage. Um, you have a lot of very sturdy uh, wines from that vintage, but uh, I find them to be a little softer and more plush than the 14s and 13s. The 13 overall I would describe as a very assertive uh, vintage and um, kind of easing over to the 16s, which I found was a very soft vintage. I'm, I'm enjoying the new 2016 releases from many wineries. And I was really surprised to see the proportions of the varietals. Um, so 90% Cabernet Sauvignon, 5% Merlot, 2% Petit Syrah, 2% Malbec, and 1% Cabernet Franc. So with the exception of the Petit Syrah, this is pretty much a Bordeaux blend um, because Bordeaux is Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Malbec, and Petit Verdot. And it looks like they just subbed in Petit Syrah which uh, I'm actually looking forward to trying this. However, because there is 90% Cabernet Sauvignon, they could have labeled this uh, Cab Sauv instead of a red blend, uh, but they're not required to by law. So um, it, in the United States, to have the Cabernet Sauvignon label, you have to have at least 75% of that particular grape in the bottle, according to the TTB, which is the alcohol, tobacco, uh, tax and Trade Bureau. So um, I know that might be a little confusing for people like why why don't you just put the varietal on it? But really that's kind of a new world thing and by new world um, I meant I'm thinking of countries like Australia, South Africa, um, the United States and um, New Zealand where they'll put the varietal whereas if you go to the old world um, France, Spain, Italy, they don't always put the varietal on there. They'll put the region on and you're just supposed to know what that means. So um, that's something to look for um, if you're trying to find the varietal that you're interested in. And they're also not required to put the proportions of each grape on the bottle. Uh, so that's kind of up to the discretion of the winery. In addition, this fruit comes from Lake Lodi and Monterey Appalachians. That's interesting because the fruit characteristics that develop at, in each of those regions is very different. Lake County uh, fruit often um, is used in combination with Napa Valley fruit. And um, I think it has a fairly sturdy tannin structure overall. And then Monterey, it um, has a more coastal influence. You get cool ocean breezes, so you get much more soft fruit. And then in Lodi, I tend to get more opulent um, fruit. They're more plush and juicy and fruity. Um, and the climate there is very hot. You're in the Central Valley of California. 
uh, and when I was working in the vineyard there, just like you're in the bottom of a frying pan. Uh, but the evenings can cool off somewhat, which which is which is nice. It's a, a nice relief, and you do get breezes in Lodi from a region um, that's to the west called the Delta, the famous Delta breezes. They kind of cool off the area, and that's great because then the vine metabolism can just oh, it can relax and. Um, kind of recover from the bombardment of that much heat and light throughout the day. So um, in addition, it uh, was aged in one to two year old American oak barrels. So a one year old American oak barrel is gonna have the biggest wallop of oakiness and then a two year old uh, American oak barrel is gonna be softer. And then the difference between American, French, Hungarian, um, there's a different flavor profile. Um, so I tend to get more of the humidor cigar box vanilla uh, from American Oak. And what I like to do is to lean the wine against a white surface. So I have a, a napkin here um, to assess the color and transparency of the wine. Uh, this top edge here where it's starting to become translucent is the halo. And um, this is where I like to look and um, to start to assess transparency, I move more towards the bell of the glass and uh, you can see how well the wine um, sort of dissipates in terms of transparency. And this is also, this halo edge is a great way to um, assess the color. So this wine is a 2015 and it's currently 2020, um, which you can see from the date of this video, but it has a touch of age on it. Uh, the color overall um, is still quite vibrant. It doesn't have an excessive amount of age on it, but I can see that it's not quite a bright red or a bright purple. Um, this is on the red spectrum of pigmentation. It is starting to show a, a softness towards the brown spectrum, so it does have a little age on it. And then then um, I can see my fingers through it on this upper edge, but as I move for further down, um, I can't see my fingers through it. So this is fairly opaque. So a good amount of pigmentation. Anyway, let's do the swirl sniff sip. And um, it's interesting if you take your nose and place it towards where you would place your mouth on the glass. And then take the tip of your nose and place it towards the top of the glass instead. When I place my nose to the bottom of the glass, I just get oak. I don't get fruit on this wine at all. However, when I place my nose to the top of the glass, I get uh, more aroma because you have all this area for the, um, the aromatics to build up inside of the glass. So lots of head space. So that's why you don't fill your glass up to the tippy top. You need room for it to groove and move and build up the aromatics. Uh, so let's give it a taste. It's a very soft red. I'm not getting a ton of fruit on it. Um, I think it's good to drink it now. And if I didn't know the alcohol level I, that was only 13.9, I'd be extremely surprised because I feel like I'm getting a lot of alcohol on it. Maybe I need to let it sort of breathe for a little while and um, some it would be more expressive. I'm getting heat as in alcohol uh, mainly at this point. And yes, I do make all those noises when I drink wine. I'm sure it uh, is weird for people who maybe don't drink wine. And hopefully it's not a, a trigger warning for people who hate sort of eating sounds. But um, I am incorporating air into the wine on my palate. And it allows the wine to move when you kind of um, chew on the wine. Um, if we're talking about tannins, I mean, I'm getting very little little um, abrasiveness, which is a plus. Um, anyway, I'm going to sip on this um, and maybe it will evolve slightly in the glass. And I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of wines that I've recently purchased and uh, kind of talk about that logic. 
Uh, I purchased these wines today from Bottle Barn in um, Sonoma County and each retails for $13.99. And this is Whip Smart Wine Company and this is the 2017 Near to the Wild Heart and um, it's primarily Syrah um, from the Russian River Valley that was aged in a combination of French and Hungarian oak. Um, so let's see what else, 14.8% alcohol. Um, so I'm looking forward to trying one of these this weekend and then the other one I'm going to hang on to for a little while and see um, what happens as I age it. Okay, so these are grocery outlet purchases. Uh, so I had this uh, Cadareta Syrah from Columbia Valley and it's the 2016 vintage, so it's from Washington. 100% Syrah, 14.8% alcohol, which is the same as the other one, but one year younger in vintage and a different uh, region of the West Coast. I think this one was $5.99. Then I got the last one of this Manifesto 2015 Zinfandel from Lodi, so um, Central Valley. Um, Lodi is known for Zinfandel. It's just kind of what it's what it, what it's famous for. And I just think the word manifesto um, spoke to me because lately I've been thinking a lot about a personal manifesto and. Um, what what kind of my my vision is uh, but this was vented and bottled by manifesto in napa however the fruit was grown in lodi so 13.8 percent alcohol which is super impressive for a zinfandel because they tend to be um they tend to pack an alcoholic wallop um, because you get raisins and um lots of um dried fruit on your average Zinfandel vine, which increases the sugar, which increases the alcohol. This one was $5.99. And then I had this um, El Primero. Um, this is uh, Graciano and Garnacha, so a blend of two varietals. And um, let's see, so 85% Graciano and 15% Garnacha from Navarra, Spain. And I'm just trying to get more wines that are not from Napa. I love Napa. However, uh, I feel like I want to be more well-rounded. And this is going with dinner tomorrow night. And this one was only $7.99. So I'm excited about that. And this is um, a screw top. And then the weekend before last, I went up to Anderson Valley to visit a friend who is a vineyard manager in that area. And um, I don't normally drink a lot of Pinot, but I have been enjoying a lot of fresh fruited varietals like the Grenache, the, the Syrah, um, which can be um, made into an interpretation of red wine that is on the fruitier side. So I got this Dosh Vineyard 2015 Pinot Noir from Domain Anderson. And uh, the reason I got it is because it just screamed braids meat wine. It just needs to go with something very wintry. And um, it also had, it's it was a the more sultry of the Pinots. And um, Wow, there's a lot of cool specs. It shows you the, the vineyard block, the clone, and yield. I love this kind of data on the back of a wine bottle. I know it's not required that they um, reveal this information, but for wine geeks, it's certainly fun. And then I got a 2010 Scharfenberger. Um, this is a sparkling wine. Um, made in Mendocino County where Anderson Valley is and this was uh, surprisingly reasonable priced for being bubbles um, and this is a Blanc de Blanc so it's all Chardonnay there's no Pinot Noir or Pinot Meunier in it and I was just so excited to try a um, vintage um, sparkling wine because a lot of times they're non-vintage there's no date on it because they blend many different um, vintages together and um, I usually like um, sparkling wines that are um, made from 
Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier because they're a bit fruitier, but this one really appealed to me. I think part of it was the um, effervescence. Um, it definitely had a nice pop to it, and it's also a smaller production um, and not distributed. So I was excited to have that one. And then another oddity, this is a uh, sparkling wine. It's a pet nat. So uh, basically the sparkling is made in a way that is different from the traditional method. Like in the sparkling I just showed you, the bubbles are made within the bottle and they use a, a crown cap like you would have on a bottle of soda. And um, this is from Austria. It's called Kalkspitz. Oh gosh, I'm just butchering that. Anyway, $21.99, not too bad for a sparkling, and uh, it's non-vintage, so many different years, and uh, it has um, Gruner Veltliner, Zweitgelt, Sauvignon Blanc, Blauer Portugieser, and Muscat Atonal, and uh, pretty, pretty exciting thing. I guess Kalk comes from the chalky soil. The Joel Gott has been hanging out there for a while. Let's give it a go. I'm just not getting a lot of fruit on it. It is spicy though from the oak. That initial heat or hotness I was getting, I, I mean, I, it could be construed as some alcohol, but I think that spice is from that American oak. Um, it's like baking spices. I don't think that's necessarily the fruit though, because they use that one year old American oak and American oak is very pungent relative to French oak. Thank you for joining me today. I, I hope this content's interesting. I would love to hear more about um, any topics that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it, and subscribe. And uh, cheers from wine country.